Let's make a drill bushing in on shape. This drill bushing will fit into our self-centering jig. This tool will be used to align a drill bit when making a hole. In this video, you will learn to draw the part and configure it. Let's begin our part design in an empty part studio. Select the front plane, kick off a sketch, and let's create two guides for the outer diameters of our bushing. The threaded diameter will be 12 millimeters, while the outer diameter that does not carry a thread will be 11 millimeters. Align everything to the origin point and then create the height for the bushing. This will be 30 millimeters. Once the height is set, we can start generating the squares that will be the profile for the bushing geometry. We can create the top where we will have the thread that will be 10 millimeters and the bottom of the bushing, which will be the rest of the rectangle, which is 20 millimeters. Lastly, let's create the head of the bushing, which will be seven and a half millimeters tall and 13 millimeters in diameter. Now revolve that geometry around its center axis. To create the hole in our bushing, we will just create a simple hole using the hole tool. Set the radius to five millimeters to begin with. Now let's configure that hole size. Go into the configuration panel and create a new configuration list. We can add three quantities, M5, M6, and M8, the three different sizes for a bushing. Configure a property, go to the hole tool and configure the diameter of the hole. Then we will add the threaded exterior to our bushing. Select the external thread tool, create the external thread, and then add an appearance to that face. Cap off the beginning of your geometry by creating a one millimeter chamfer on top of the head of the bushing. Let's add some texture to the head of the bushing. Generate a sketch in the top plane, create a 12 millimeter circle, select the polygon tool and create a equilateral triangle. Make that triangle coincident with your circle, resize it properly to 0.5 millimeters. And now we're going to remove that geometry from the general bushing. And in this case, it will remove from the head. So we can make it through all and select the right direction. Once we have this, we can add some fillets to smooth out that geometry at 0.2 millimeters and create a circular pattern to generate 30 instances of the two features we just made. That would be the extrude and the fillet. This has now created some texture for a bushing. Rename your bushing and recolor it for aesthetics. From here, we can create a new sketch on the front plane. We're going to add a little bit of text to clarify what configuration of the bushing we're looking at. I like to bold my text and then I will use the transform tool to align it properly to the direction in which I'll be grabbing the tools. Align the text to the origin point or the center line of the base of your bushing and make your text 10 millimeters large. Now that we're done with the generation of text, we can wrap that text using the split on the wrap tool around the base of our bushing. Use the wrap tool to align it properly and select OK. Now in the configuration panel, we will actually configure the text so that it fits our M5, M6, and M8 schema. So like the sketch, then the text box, and then rename M6 and M8 to have all of your text reflect properly. Now that that's done, select the face splits, add an appearance, make it white, and also create a small chamfer on the top of the hole and recolor the face of the hole so that we can organize our differing hole sizes in configuration. Within the configurations panel, go to configured properties, select face appearance two, add a property and select face. This will allow you to reselect the faces for the recoloring of the text. Lastly, let's go to face appearance three and then select appearance. Now we can recolor the inner color of the hole so that we can more easily tell what configuration we're in. Now that we've configured all of those properties, whenever we change the configuration of our bushing, we should see the hole color change, the text change. Using the same technique in the configurations panel, you can rename your part, change part numbers and so on. In the assembly, you can now select the right configuration for your part, insert it into your assembly and assemble it as expected. Later, you could come back and reconfigure your assembly so that these parts are configurable within the assembly itself. That will get you extra points for this video. I hope this was useful, you learned something new and you configured some parts. We'll see you next time.